Okay, my name is uh, Michael Dunn. I'm the creator of theoryofknowledge.net, um, which is the largest online resource for um, talk in the world. Um, I'm going to be talking about the ways of knowing, um, what they are, uh, and then we'll contrast them with the areas of knowledge and how they um, differ and the similarities that they, that they might have. Um, the eight ways of knowing are the way in which we gather information about the world and make sense of it. Um, TOC used to identify just four ways of knowing, um, but they've expanded that for 2015 and they've brought in new ways of knowing such as faith, imagination, intuition and memory. This means that the changes to the ways of knowing are that they're a little more esoteric, um, a little more subjective um, and open to more interpretation really um, than the traditional four ways of knowing of reason, emotion, language and sense perception. Students need to have good knowledge of um, at least four of the ways of knowing, um, but it's wrong to see the ways of knowing in isolation. Um, you, you need to see them all in, in unison, they work together. Um, so you can't really just consider reason on its own or emotion on its own. The two of them work together along with uh, the other ways of knowing. So for this reason, um, it's not advisable to um, write an essay um, just focusing on one way of knowing because it's going to end up as quite a contrived um, essay and it would be quite artificial because these ways of knowing do not work on their own, they work together. Um, if you take reason, for example, if you answer a knowledge question on the extent to which reason provides us with accurate knowledge, you're going to end up with a very, very broad uh, and an unmanageable essay or presentation. It's much better to set your essay within the context of an area of knowledge. So you can look at, for example, mathematics and the extent to which reason alone provides us knowledge about mathematics. Or in history, um, to what extent do we rely on reason in order, to, in order to provide us with information about history. The last point to make is that it would be a mistake to see um, a very concrete delineation between the areas of knowledge and the ways of knowing. Um, the more you look at them, particularly the areas of knowledge, the more they become ways of knowing themselves. The best example is probably science. Um, when we look at science, uh, it becomes less and less a big body of knowledge and more and more a method. And the same can be said of history uh, and even the arts as well. So the last thing to say is that um, the line between the ways of knowing and the areas of knowledge uh, is not as marked as you might think. The more you look at the areas of knowledge, um, the more you see that they are less um, a body of knowledge, a set of information and data, and more about um, a way in which we acquire knowledge about the world. Take, for example, um, the natural sciences. Um, this is always subject to change. It's very provisional but it embodies a method, the scientific method. Um, the same can be said of history. A historian employs a certain methodology to arrive at knowledge. The knowledge itself may change, but the method remains constant.